Now, if we have a sense for changes in the company's addressable market, we can break revenue growth into addressable market growth and market share growth. If we have a sense for prevailing market multiples, we could break multiple expansion into market multiple expansion and intrinsic multiple expansion. And if we have an opinion about what the appropriate leverage level would be for a company in the sector, we can break gearing into sector gearing and excess gearing. Theoretically, you could do the same thing for the EBITDA margin, but for reasons that we'll discuss later, that is usually not as meaningful or worth the effort. These three value drivers capture the most important market influences, and you can add them together to estimate the market-driven return and the manager-driven return, as we see here. While PME is certainly the best way to measure the top-down opportunity cost of investing into something that is not the private equity deal, this will always give us a better bottom-up measurement of the market influence and GP value add within the private equity deal. It tells us how the market influenced the company's P&L and valuation, and there are no discrepancies driven by different debt levels because revenue growth and multiple expansion have already been unlevered with the average holding period equity ratio. And if you wish, you can plug in a sector debt level to precisely measure how much extra gain or loss was driven by the deal's departure from the typical sector leverage. 